Even non-Muslims know that regular prayers play a huge role in the Islamic faith. But did you know that there is actually a whole world when it comes to Muslim prayers that's very fascinating and eye-opening. Welcome back guys to FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and I decided to make this video because you know I'm always curious and I saw the phrase Muslim Azin online and I was like what is that? So next thing you know I'm researching Muslim prayer, blam, before you know it, here we are. The video is up on YouTube, but now you're watching it. So I have a lot to share, so make sure you watch this video up until the end so you don't miss any of these key aspects and points about Muslim prayer. So the first one, number 10, is Salat. Salat or Salat is the second of the five pillars of Islam, and the word means prayer or invocation, and it's observed five times a day at certain times throughout the day. And Salat is made up of different cycles called the Raka'ats, which include certain actions like bowing, standing, standing, sitting, and prostration. The next thing is Azin. Azin or Adin is the Islamic call to prayer and it's recited by the Muizin at certain times throughout the day. And Muslim traditions recounts that the Prophet Muhammad and his companions one day were discussing how to gather people for prayer. So some people were suggesting, hey, we should use a bell like the Christians do. Other people were like, well, let's use the ram horn like the Jews do. So now the main purpose behind the Azin Zen is to make an easy summary of the Islamic beliefs available as well as a daily reminder to pray. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Now the next thing to note is that there are very flexible times so Muslims pray five times a day, of course. So the timings for the prayers are set before sunrise, afternoon, late afternoon, sunset, and the evening prayers. Now when somebody hears this, they might get the impression that Muslims just up and stop everything that they do when it comes to prayer, no matter what the circumstance is. However, each prayer has a window which makes it easier for Muslims to pray. For instance, like the window for the afternoon prayer is between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. So so like if you're driving or something, you don't just stop in the middle of the road and get out to pray. No, you finish driving, you have a particular time window. So usually they structure their lives around the times to pray. And also that's another point, flexible prayers. So if someone is traveling or in the hospital or very, very, very ill, they're also able to combine and shorten their prayers. And combining and shorten the prayers are done in just very extreme circumstances because God doesn't intend things to be super difficult for people. And again, this is only for extreme circumstances. So also like if you're physically disabled and you cannot move, you can do the prayer movements with your eyes. But you can't be like, oh, okay, well, you know, I don't feel like praying right now. Let me just go and combine and shorten prayers because it's easier and convenient for me. No, only in extreme circumstances where you're just not able to pray. The next thing to note is that prayers are done facing Mecca. So Muslims around the world all face the city of Mecca when they perform their prayer. And this is meant to really instill a sense of unity among Muslims. It also helps turn people's heart towards Kaaba, which is the holiest site in Islam. Now, one thing you gotta make sure that you understand is that Muslims do not worship the Kaaba. It simply just serves as a focal point and it unites their prayer and praise to God despite their cultural or geographical differences. Halfway in, prayer also keeps God in mind at number five. So the easiest way I can put this is like this. If you love or you care about someone, they're always on your mind, right? And you really value that connection that you have with them. So prayer keeps Muslims in touch with God and keeps Muslims constantly reflecting on their actions. On top of that, Muslims are encouraged to pray in a bigger congregation because this allows them to interact with one another and you know someone can share something with you that inspires you to be righteous and you can do the same to them as well. So it's just a much different for an experience when you pray in a congregation. And number four, washing before prayer. So before prayer, Muslims wash their hands, their face, their feet, and their head. And this washing ablution is called wudu. The purpose behind this is to make sure that you are physically pure before going in front of God. And wudu also reminds Muslims of the need to be spiritually pure as well. Most would consider it important to be clean when you go out to 
to meet somebody important or you go for a job interview or just anything really. So that's pretty much the same thing. You physically purify yourself to go before God. There's also an aspect of spiritual cleansing. So the Prophet Muhammad said that if a person had a stream outside his door and he bathed in it five times a day, do you think he would have any filth left on him? And the people said, no filth would remain on him whatsoever. Then the Prophet Muhammad said, this is like the five daily prayers. Allah wipes away the sins by them. And number two, it also helps you recite the Quran. So each prayer consists of a certain movement, as I mentioned, the bowing, prostrating, and all of that. But one of the most important parts of the prayer is the recitation of some part of the Quran from memory. And this allows Muslims to constantly be in touch with the Word of God. It's to be recited in a beautiful and melodious way that appeals to the emotions of anyone that may be listening. So the word Quran actually means recite. And the final point I want to share with you is that the prayers also always end in peace. Each prayer ends with a statement that means peace be upon you. And the word Salah in Arabic comes from the root word Silla, which means to connect. Prayer provides a regular constant opportunity to really just disconnect from your everyday circumstances and all of that and connect with God. And the prayer is therefore a peaceful liberation from the temptations of worldly things. So this peace is said to be not something that comes through material possessions, but can only be found when you disconnect from everything and connect with God. So guys, those were 10 things that you need to know about Muslim prayers. Of course, there's so much more that can be said about this. So let me know down below in the comment sections, if you are a Muslim, what other things about prayers do you think everybody else should know? Sound off down below. And if you enjoyed this video, definitely check out a similar video. You can click on the annotation right beside my head right here. I'll also have a link to that video below in the video description section. And also my links to my social media are below as well. So hit me up on social media, Instagram especially. I do my best to try to respond to as many messages as possible. And as always, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you'd be notified of future FTD Facts episodes.